Thank you very much, Kaylee. And kia ora koutou, and nami hinui, kia koutou katoa. Thank you all very much for coming today. Um, it's really awesome to be doing this. Huge thanks to Shock for allowing us to really share the successes we've had at Lincoln about these really important issues. So I'm really delighted to have the chance to have this conversation today because we're really pleased with the success we've had with the program, which we call Respectfully Lincoln, that we set up several years ago. All our first year students are required to take the program and basically it's designed to, well, I'll tell you more about what it's designed to do, but very much around raising awareness of consent issues and so forth. And it definitely has a real, it had an impact on our students on campus. So we're very pleased with the success of the program. And today we really want to have a chat about what's worked and in case anybody wants to learn from that and take anything forward. So I'm delighted to introduce Jackie and Cathy and how we're going to run the session is basically I have um, a number of questions that I'm going to put to them, um, but hopefully there's time at the end for some further discussion. So if any of you have any discuss any questions you'd also like to ask, please, as Kaylee said, just um, put them into, um, into the comments and um, we'll hopefully get to them at the end. So will we... Good to go. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So I'll start with a question for you, Jackie. In terms of being the initiator of the program, can you tell us about the history of the program and how it got started? Sure. Thanks, Rosalind. And kia ora koutou, nga mihi mahana kia koutou. Um, it is great to be here today. And, and so the history of the program and how it started, probably similar to um, many campuses a lot of you who are listening in today um, will have had this experience. People have been working for quite a long time to try and reduce sexual harm on campus. We have known that it's an issue. And um, so I think I would start with Thursdays in Black coming onto campus because that gave it another mm -hmm. step in its presence. And initially here, staff brought it onto campus and then students took it and, and ran with it and got involved. And so we were just, uh, I think, very fortunate to have a real synergy with um, Thursdays in Black and the student voice in that space and our Students Association um, coming in really strongly asking for um, help and support to reduce sexual harm. And at the same time, the wellbeing conversation in general was getting louder. So we had some early pioneering and then a wellbeing coordinator came into that space and for various reasons at the same time senior management had also become a lot more aware of the issues around sexual harm and were highly motivated to help um, things get better, hopefully reduce the incident, incidents, um, also look at policy and procedure. So those things kind of all came together at the same time as in the outside world there was a lot more conversation and support for people who had experienced sexual harm. So we held a hui um, on campus and invited people from everywhere. So we had staff and students working together, um, diversity across uh, gender and culture, um, and across a lot of services. So we had academic, we had proctors, we had accommodation, we had wellbeing. And we basically worked through the problem as we saw it. Mm -hmm. And what we all thought we needed, the various working groups came up with different things. And um, in addition to that, we were in the stage of uh, setting the first strategy for the whole wellbeing program. And there was agreement really across campus that this was an issue that needed to work on it first and foremost. So that's, that's kind of how it started. Um, and... I think having people like you who have a lot of experience and have been working in the field for a while and a lot of the people yeah, on the call, shock, definitely. Yeah, shock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, everybody's work informs yeah. what you do. Yeah. So, so we started there and from there we decided collectively that a program for students would be really good. So that's kind of how it, we began. Awesome. Um, you mentioned about the involvement of SMG, and obviously it's really important to have the support of the top. So can you tell us more about the involvement of the VC and the sure. SMG? Yes, great. Um, so the senior management group, um, one of the senior managers was very keen to um, see more of a well-being um, more well-being support, more mm -hmm. well-being presence in education and leadership to so really see the university move forward there. And so 
um, she generated, you know, quite a lot of conversation at that level. And uh, the VC at that time was very receptive to growth orientated initiatives. Mm -hmm. And also quite aware of uh, the level of the problem. Yep. So um, we've then proceeded to our current VC, and again, um, he's been very supportive. And um, I think the way we have really worked here is we've worked to have conversations at every level that meet each other. Yeah. And we've worked to make those conversations really informed, yeah. you know, informed by statistics, informed by um, experience, obviously experience that um, respects privacy completely. But I guess for me, as I came into the wellbeing coordinator role and then wellbeing manager, because I, I have a GP background and I've worked at student health yeah. for um, some quite some years, I had also had that experience in sexual harm uh, from working with people who had been affected by sexual harm or alleged perpetrators. So um, I guess, you know, having a practitioner in the mix as well yeah. was quite critical for the advocates and the managers and the students who, who wanted to take things yeah. forward. Um, so I think we we've always focused on communication within the university as part of the really important parts of the program. This is mm -hmm. what we're doing. Mm -hmm. This is why we're doing it. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of the places where Kathy is absolutely essential to the program. Mm -hmm. So Kathy is our project coordinator. And uh, do you want to comment on the communications aspect there? Uh, yes, yes, so we do. Um, or, or maybe we'll come on to that later when we, mm -hmm. yeah. I, yeah. But um, it's important that uh, we um, help as many people to know about it as possible. And it's almost, we're trying to make it so much part of our culture that we, you know, we treat people with respect and dignity, yeah. hence respectfully, Lincoln. It's, it's about uh, creating a, um, a space where, yeah, we can have those sorts of conversations. Yeah. Um, but yes, there's poster campaigns and, mm -hmm. um, an email campaign that's managed through um, the CRM system so that we know that every student is being contacted yes. a certain number of times about the program and um, we involve LUSA and um, accommodation to support yep. us with that mm. communication so yeah it's uh, yeah. yeah and I think one of the other really important parts is that um, our current VC also has a background of that some years ago being a warden in the halls ah Yes. So, you know, is, is very yeah. familiar with that environment yeah, yeah. and the, you know, the successes and the possible yeah. issues there. Yeah. So um, he has actually been very supportive all the way through. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, so over to you, Cathy. Could you yeah. tell us about what actually happens in a session? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So it's a two hour workshop. Um, and typically we have about anywhere between, I don't know, six to 25 students mm -hmm. in the room um, and there's two student facilitators uh, running the session. And so we'll talk more about the facilitators later on, but yeah. in terms of the actual content, um, we cover all aspects of um, or what we believe is going to support as with our overall objective of reducing yeah. or minimising sexual harm. And so we talk about um, what constitutes a healthy relationship, mm -hmm. what, health, what constitutes a healthy sexual relationship. Uh, we talk about uh, sexuality and gender. Uh, we talk about consent. Um, we talk about pornography, the law around um, sexual uh, violation, di harmful digital, digital yeah. communications, um, and also um, about being an upstander and encouraging right. the students to um, intervene where they feel safe to do so if they see behavior that's yeah. uh, inappropriate um, and I guess you know it's they're, they're often taboo subjects that, it, mm. that, that potentially students haven't really had the space to talk about freely or explore those topics so for instance the pornography section is mm. quite sort of you know we put up a slide and it's entitled pornography or porn I think we call it and it's you know you see a few sort of hard stairs <laughs> yeah. in the room like what have I walked into <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but it's about providing the students a space where they can start to explore 
those subjects for themselves. It's not about yes. saying, oh, this is wrong and this is right. It's just yeah. about providing a space for them to ask, well, what do I think about this? And, and, and how do I want pornography mm -hmm. to feature in my uh, life? Yeah, yeah. And uh, how is it, how is that supporting or not supporting uh, yeah. a sexual relationship that I might be in? So, um, yeah, so that's in a nutshell, yeah. <laughs> the, um, the, the content of the workshop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I remember when I attended one, I was very surprised at how explicit it got. I think, and we, we, you know, we really build, as Kathy said, on where the students are at. That's why we have student facilitators yes. rather than staff facilitators. Yeah. So that, you know, the aim is to generate a really robust yeah. discussion in the mm -hmm. social milieu where the harm happens. Yeah. Absolutely. Because that's what the evidence suggests for working with people yeah. in this age group if you want effective change. Yeah. You know, it's they look to their peers, that's that's who is really interesting in that space. You know, adults or you know, people of a mm. different generation are not so interesting. And I was thinking when you were talking about really explicit and talking about healthy sexual relationships, I mean when we talk about really explicit, we, we do talk about different kinds of sexual activity as a way of then introducing some of the crimes around sexuality. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. so that under the Harmful Digital Communications Act, yeah. you know, if people haven't considered sexting and sharing nudes and those yeah, kind yeah. of things, you know, then they wonder why we've got that. Um, and um, so there is a context mm. around it. We, oh, we're definitely. definitely not saying, yeah. oh, no, this no, is no. healthy in a sexual <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, it's that, that self-reflection that's Absolutely. just so yeah. important. Yeah. And as yeah. you say, that some of them have never done this before. Yeah. So it's a space where they can do that safely and, and actually get to understand what other people are thinking around this same, same yeah. sort of mm. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. And also we provide a sort of rigorous support uh, um, set of support resources yeah. for them as well. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so yeah. if they have been challenged by the conversations, there's there's places they can go. Yeah. We also um, ensure that there's a support person in the room who's not yes. part of necessarily the workshop. Yeah. So that might be Jackie or myself or one of the counsellors yeah. who just sits and observes and is available if, mm. if, in, if yeah, it needed, yeah. Mm, yeah. yeah. Mm, yeah. And, and people can leave as well. Yeah. You know, and then one of us will just check how they are yeah. and that that's okay. Yeah. And we also have a quite a robust exemption system now as well. Yes. Right. We tell people, you know, if, um, if you've been affected by sexual right. harm, it's most likely better that you don't come to this workshop. Um, please, can you just contact us? We don't need to have any mm. conversation yeah. other than here are the reasons for exemptions. Um, you qualify. Uh, great. We'll give you an exemption. So in, in that communication, yeah. it's, it's very much going off what the student says to us in their yeah. first email so that they um, don't experience any re-traumatisation or anything like that, but yeah. that we know for sure, okay, yep, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. not appropriate. And that's something that we learnt, you know, in yeah. the first year. We thought we had it covered, but our email was not nuanced enough. Right. And now now I think we've yeah. we've got it right. Yeah. Um, you know, with the, we're not having the disclosures triggered that we did in the first year. Right. Yeah. Um, um, which, yeah. you know, we knew that was quite likely, but yeah. yeah. So yeah, obviously as the programs run it's, we've made changes over time to improve it and so forth. That's one obviously. What are some other things that you've that you've learned from it that you've improved over time? Um, gosh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, we we started with a pilot, didn't we? You know, in the halls. So right. we we had to kind of create something. Yes. And um, you know, we worked with the existing programs that were around then, the New Zealand Defence Forces one, and right, that's right. with um, mm -hmm. a PhD, Lily Ross mm -hmm. from the University of Otago. Yeah. Um, and and we worked really closely with students creating those initial resources, training our facilitators, you know, we had we had to work out what exactly they needed and we found out in that first year that um, they needed quite a lot more support because of the exhausting nature, yeah, nature of the subject of matter mm -hmm. and um, and we also learned a lot about the responses that yeah. came up in the room, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> which were very surprising to yeah. us. <laughs> 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 and, uh, and, and that we needed to give them the skills to meet yes. that in yeah. a very positive mm -hmm. and affirming yeah. way that would allow mm -hmm. any student to feel supported with what they yeah. said, but also we found the strength is in the group responding to yeah. that student. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. 
you know yeah, yeah. so we, we we actually have quite a hard-hitting scenario of sexual assault um in the workshop mm. and we read it out as two roles it doesn't say this is a sexual assault situation it says one story two experiences um and but it is actually a, a rape scenario a non-consenting um sexual encounter and then we um, ask the students in their groups to discuss a series of questions is there consent um uh, where would one of these people get their ideas what could their friends have done mm -hmm. it, it, what are some of the effects and we've really refined that story yeah. a lot over yeah. the years haven't we absolutely yeah um yeah I think, yeah, a lot of the um, examples or scenarios that we use have moved and changed as we've uh, learnt about our audience more and, um, yes, yeah, seen yeah. Wh wh where, where is going to be the most, um, uh, where we're going to get the most um, change yes. or yeah. discussion. Impact. Yes. Impact. Yes. Yeah, yes. that's the word I'm looking Absolutely. For. Yeah. I mean, we've also done, um, we've included a well being section now at the beginning, which is a really nice sort of precursor. It sort of sets mm -hmm. the scene very nicely because we, uh, we use the Tefare Tefifa model mm -hmm. as a way of saying, hey, this is where it sits. Um, yeah. It's, it's all about a balance. Um, and, uh, and also just from a, presentation point of view we've we're starting to include more videos or just snippets of right. mm -hmm. yeah um, use like uh visual visuals yep. a lot more so um yeah and we, we work really closely with the facilitators so they they have a paid role now initially they were voluntary uh -huh. and then we realized mm. just how much work there was for right. them mm. and lobbied to have them paid yeah. so we we started with the accommodation pilot we got really good and helpful feedback from the mm. students who'd gone through it as well as the facilitators mm. and then um, we worked with the university who were then keen to have us take it right across yeah. all the first year students so that's yes. another change yes and now across the day students as well with yeah, the program yeah. and the students wrote the scenarios we use scenarios yeah. at different times through the presentation so that they really actually reflect their experience yeah and then you know different students have come on board from mm -hmm. different cultural groups different more diverse mm -hmm. areas mm -hmm. and they have rewritten things for yeah. us which has been really oh, useful cool. fantastic yeah so we you know and especially in the beginning we worked a lot yeah. with the two um initial presidents of thursdays in black right because they were very keen and, and really wanted to um drive this and um with um students who went on to become presidents yeah. of our students association mm. um so the, the student input i think is something that also makes this program yeah more of so much more effective but yeah. also a bit different from its peers definitely and that mm. brings us nicely to the next thing i was going to ask which is all about like i know this program has been um very successful and i know it's actually very inspiring to run as well so mm, so what's made that difference what makes mm. it work and what makes it rewarding to be part of yeah several things <laughs> i mean it's just uh, obviously it's just so great to be involved with a program that um, we know and believe is reducing yeah. sexual harm and we see that through um, we, we've surveyed our staff and uh, they tell us that they are seeing reduced number of incidences mm -hmm. um, and, and one of the things for me that's very heartening is to see the growth of the facilitators and the role right. that those facilitators are playing on campus now more as sort of thought leaders and action leaders right. around and they they just have a genuine passion yeah. for for this subject matter and for well-being in general yeah and to see them grow into that space yeah. and to um, make a difference is is fantastic yeah. Did yeah. you want to say yeah. more about that? Um, and no, I completely agree with that. It's been a, a very inspiring um, change because they become really confident as facilitators. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And they also, they get really good at handling the unexpected and listening to what's yeah, going yeah. on in an audience. And yes. they get a real feel for the thoughts that are yeah, yeah. there mm. and the different attitudes. Yeah. And I think with the, and the nice thing also about the staff survey is that we were seeing um, people coming forward with a wider variety of incidents, right. so sexual mm -hmm. harassment and decent assault rather than mm -hmm. more of a focus on the serious stuff. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. People much more aware of the supports 
um, mm. and the processes. Yes. So, I w you know, often when you have a program like this, you get more reporting and we yeah. um, have seen that as well, but right. quite a lot of that is more reporting of historical things, ah, okay. um, but also uh, a lot more diverse reporting of current issues. Right. So, and, and a lot stronger and more supportive process around that and still yeah. ongoing work. So part of, mm. you know, we, as well as this program, we've created a whole sexual harm and response mm. Uh, role yeah. and procedures and pathways that's right, that have fallen out of that. flow diagram that's yeah. now all around the campus and is very clear. Yeah. <laughs> like, yes. Yeah. yeah. So that's been inspiring as well, mm -hmm. like helping students yeah. negotiate that pathway and seeing how much better it worked. Yeah. It works than, than where we yeah, started. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And you've already spoken a bit about the student facilitators. Mm -hmm. Is there anything think else you wanted to add about? their role in this? Um, uh, yes, I mean, they, they, they come from our existing yes. students. So um, we recruit, and um, last year, for instance, we ran a sort of recruitment campaign, I guess, uh, uh, seeking new facilitators. Uh, they've all got a genuine interest and passion for the yeah. subject. And they, it, yeah, they, they've gone on to do, obviously we provide them with full training, not only yeah. in the content, but also in terms of how to present, how yes. to engage with your audience, how to um, pull out the audience, not pull out, but <laughs> encourage the audience members Absolutely. that are quieter to speak up. Yes. Or, um, uh, yeah, so uh, we provide them training and um as Jackie said, it's paid yeah. a role, and we we although the workshop is only two hours, we pay them for three hours. So, and and part of that is we always include a sort of set up time at the start. Yeah. So they're responsible for making sure that the room is set up in such a yeah. way that is conducive to group conversations. So they set the room yeah, up yeah. in small uh, tables of four to six students yeah. within the room. So it's not a sort of lecture style. Yes. Um, and then at the end, really importantly, we do we run a debrief with them, right. so that they can just run through well what went well and it, what was tricky and yeah. what what can I do differently as a result yeah. of having been through this yeah. audience. Mm. And, um, yes, and the and I think you know what we're seeing is their mental health and stress has been, the, the mental health has been better and their stress has yeah. been less yes. than the first year yes. when we were finding our way with yeah. it. Yeah. And and we've yeah. also seen some great successes post graduation. You know, oh, so yeah. some of them to use the skills gone on to the communities yeah. to help mm. you know initiate yeah. and grow wellbeing programs and mm. MC and yes. Yes. yeah. So it's it's really oh. good to see the development. Yeah, yeah. Um, across that and I think gender balance is essential oh, yeah. oh, of course you know ha sense. having a, a, at least a male and a female um, gender diversity has also been a really important part mm. of our program um, having representation um, in that space so that we've we've strengthened um, gender diversity within yeah, the program yeah, that makes and sense. the education that we do around that. Yeah. Um, that's been quite powerful and yeah. certainly um, we've noticed some changes on campus, positive changes, which yeah. may be associated with that and probably are associated yeah. with everything that else. everyone is doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. I think those are some of the inspiring things. I think really what I like to see, Rosalind, and what we both really enjoy is the change in the room. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, because a lot of these oh, people yeah. have come through, the students have come through school, mates and dates, and they're all a bit sort of, oh, um, why do I have to be here? Why is this compulsory? And then the facilitators mm -hmm. really get it going and generate a buzz yeah. and suddenly they realize, oh, no one's telling us what we should do. But we're actually talking about real life stuff. We're talking about, um, okay, they split up and his mates suggested he sleep around and what, what do we think about that? And mm. and she hasn't had an STI check and isn't telling people and what do we think about that? Mm. And, you yeah. know, so all of a sudden they kind of see themselves yeah. represented on that page. And then we might have, um, we have one about peer pressure when someone um, is a virgin and, and wants to stay that way and their friends are peer pressure, pressuring them. And, you know, so it's it kind of brings in, hopefully, you know, elements of culture, faith, family, into a very real life situation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and 
you know, you, you do hear some of the conversations and you hear them at the beginning and you often hear people's really strong sort of mindsets and a lot of the myths like, you know, victim blaming and, um, mm -hmm. you know, in our scenario, she wore a, you know, fancy low cut dress and then we drill down into, oh yeah, she borrowed it from a friend and she just thought it looked really good and he thought she wore the dress because she wanted to have sex with him and, you know, right. so we, we really, and you hear the change in the room. Right. As they actually right. realise. As they actually realise. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. so if someone says, oh yeah, there was consent there, you know, she went upstairs with him yeah. and everyone else goes, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. He didn't ask her. She, right. she didn't say yes. And we, we talk about the freeze response in situations yeah. that are, mm -hmm. you know, totally traumatic for people. Yeah. So mm -hmm. they, mm -hmm. they really get an idea of why, oh, oh, okay. So, he or she didn't say yes, but we talk about how consent is actually a negligent crime as well. You know, yeah. you have to actually show that you obtained consent for mm -hmm. what you wanted to do, the person who initiates whatever sexual yeah. activity it is. Mm -hmm. So there usually is quite a change in the room by the absolutely. end, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah. And so what are your plans to do next with it? Where are you going next with it? Um... Uh, we have been we, we're planning a, a radio show uh, through Plains oh, wow. FM. So um, again, co-led with the students. Um, oh, awesome. So a series, hopefully, of um, radio programs to um, outline what respectfully Lincoln is about, but yeah. also drill down into some of the content and um, yeah, oh, cool. Showcase our work and hopefully support others in in the wider community. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Mm. Just get That's a bit really of exciting education yeah, yeah, aspect yeah. out yeah. there and and talk about it as part of normal yeah, yeah. life, something that we need to deal with. And yeah, I think you know one of the sort of um, aha moments was for me personally was early on in the hui when we had thirty. 35 people in the room and by the time we got to the end of the day everyone in the room had mentioned an incident that had happened to them oh and stuck in their life not mm. not a, I'm not talking about rape no, but I mean on yeah, the yeah. continuum yeah. Yeah, between yeah. you know that, digital yeah. stuff sexual harassment mm. um, indecent yeah. assault yeah, yeah. and and um, sexual assault and that that was a real yeah, wake yeah. up moment for me mm, definitely um, so so yes we've got a radio show yeah. coming, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, and yeah. we um, are completely in support of any other tertiary yeah. group who um, want to do something on their campus yeah. that works for them on their campus. Very happy to share resources. Um, obviously, every campus wants to do it differently and needs to do yeah. it differently. Um, I think it's been wonderful for us to have the support from the research, yes. you know, such as the yeah, University yeah. of Otago studies. Yes. And, um, the conversations that we've been able to have with other yeah. universities, so more than happy to um, offer back. Um, and then Absolutely. I think, yeah. really, we, as Kathy said, we do quite a lot in terms of communication, getting the yeah. messaging out there in mm. lots of different forms. Mm. So that's been something we've come onto more latterly. Yes, we'll we'll do a review with the um, Not on My Campus Tertiary Wellbeing Association yeah. toolbox and just see, okay, where else could we work yeah. here? Mm. The sexual harm response and prevention role has been widened so yeah. that there are two people, because I was in it for. Um, well, when did we get it started? Two and a half years, and mm -hmm. you definitely need more than one person right. in that space. It can be yeah, yeah, pretty intense absolutely. at times. Um, mm -hmm. And we're also just widening the wellbeing message. So we've started mm -hmm. working in the area of um, wellbeing and mental fitness, mental health, and suicide yeah. prevention. Oh, and wow. yeah. um, we've been working with faculty. We had a, yeah. a program in one of the um, diploma programs this year that they're now taking forward and working with cool. other yeah, yeah. industry and, and hoping to bring it right across their faculty. So yeah. awesome. That's exciting. Yeah. Um, and again we've well, that's been a collaboration of students and staff. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Mm. So awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well thank you for both so much. Um, I'm just wondering since we've got not a huge number of people here. If people have questions and they'd rather just ask them than write them, um, feel free. So I guess over to anyone on the screen if you have